Kia ora, and welcome to this four-part tutorial series where I'm going to try and cover my workflow for integrating CG elements into live action footage. Now, this can be kind of a complicated process and I'm not sure if my way is the perfect way, but I get some all right results, so I wanna share my process with you. This is our final shot. And as you can see, I've shot my kitchen floor and I've added in the CG houses. Now, what's important to note is that you'll notice they have a shadow they have reflections in the wood, reflections in the bowl, and there is a lantern on the house that's casting light on the floor of our real shot. So that's what we're going to be covering in this tutorial today. So first things first, I shot my footage. I shot it on my Ursa Mini Pro, and um, you can see I've added in this bowl here that's going to catch our reflections. And I've also put my 360 degree camera right in the spot where I want the house so that we can get an HDRI out of it. I won't go into how to create an HDRI, but I will link a video that is uh, very good for describing that process. So we're going to be using a combination of After Effects and Blender for this. Um, so here in After Effects, I'm just going to import my footage, grab my shot, open that up. And I'm just going to slide it to where I kind of know I want my shot to start. Maybe around here. And where I want it to finish. Somewhere here. And I'm just going to drag that into my composition like so. And I'm going to go to my composition settings. Set the start frame to 1. And set the length to 150. Now, because I shot this in log, it's a very flat profile, which is not great for tracking. So I'm just going to throw on a custom LUT that I made that I will include in the description. So let's go to our effects and presets and type Lumetri. Drag on Lumetri color here. And under basic correction, I can browse for my custom LUT. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually, um, we're going to export this as an image sequence because Blender prefers image sequences and they're kind of just easier to work with. So I'm going to go control M in my window here, which is going to bring up the render panel. I'm going to change this to a PNG sequence, leave it at the same size and choose an output directory. And hit render. Okay, let's go on and import our rendered sequence. I'm just going to import the same one that I used for the, uh, the test. So just click on that first frame, make sure PNG sequence is selected, and hit import. Now we can right click interpret footage main and set our frame rate to our footage frame rate, which is 24. This is an important step. Don't forget. I'm just going to drag that in on top of our uh, footage and delete the footage since we're now just working with this sequence. Let's go ahead and camera track this. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to track and stabilize and I'm going to track camera. Now before this gets too far ahead of itself, let's go to advanced settings and turn on detailed analysis. And that is done and solve in the camera. Now we have a bunch of track points, which is perfect. So. I'm just going to go to the end of the timeline here because I've got a couple uh, extra points that pop up here. What we want to do is we want to set the origin of our scene, which is where this camera is. So we're going to choose a few points on the ground here. See if we can... Uh, there we go. Get our origin roughly where our camera is. So let's set ground plane and origin. That's, so that's the first step that you want to do. All right, so we've done that. Now we can right click and we can create a solid and camera. If I scale this up here and rotate it on the Z axis. Now we can see that we have a pretty solid track. Okay, let's add one more solid, because we uh, we have the position that we want our first house to be in. We also need the position of this bowl. So I'm going to select our 3D camera track effect, and let's select some points on this bowl. Those seem to be working. 
So let's right click and create a solid. And now we have two solids in our scene. Next step, we need to import this into Blender. I'm going to open up Blender here. I'm going to delete everything. And I am using a plugin called AE2 Blend. It's about $10. Uh, on the marketplace and if you're doing a lot of tracking and you do it fast and easy this is a really good solution so there you go otherwise you can of course track natively in blender so i'm just going to select my camera here toggle down the transform and i'm going to select all of these properties and hit Control c drop back into blender and create camera and we can see over here our camera has popped in and it is animating. Let's hop back into After Effects and let's do the same for our solids. So let's grab all these transform options except opacity, Control C, and let's create a plane. And let's do that one more time with our last one. Go to our transform options, everything except opacity, Control C, and create a plane. Now if we uh, hop into our camera view we can see that it is tracking and I'm going to set my scene frame to 150 because that's the length of our image sequence. And uh, one other thing I'm going to do is uh, we don't need this empty so I'm going to Alt P on this plane, clear the parent and keep the transformation and then delete this empty. And we actually don't need this plane so I'm just going to delete that and scale up this empty to use for reference later. All right, now let's jump into our camera and add our background image so that we can see what's going on. Our background images, movie clip open. Hit A to select all of those images. Open clip. There we go. Let's set the opacity to full. Now we're not going to be quite tracked yet. And there's a few more things we need to do. So if we stay in our camera settings here, we've got to change our lens. So we'll hop over to After Effects, select our camera, go to Layer, Camera Settings, and we'll see here that it thinks our lens is 38.13 millimeters. So let's hop over to Blender and input that into the box here. 38.13 millimeters, there we go. And uh, the other thing that's worth checking is your sensor size it should be the same by default. But yeah, 36 it says horizontally as well. You can set this to horizontal. It won't change anything, but uh, why not? Let's give this a save. So we are almost tracked now, uh, but something is still a little bit off. So the last thing we need to do is let's select our camera transform go over to these keyframes and pressing G we can make sure that these frames start on frame one so we'll just slide them over by one frame and now we should have a pretty good track okay I'm gonna leave it there for the first part of the uh, the series just remember to save your work at this point and um, yeah, next time we're going to bring in some models and start working those into our scene. So thank you for watching this far. We'll see you in the next one.